We live in an age where medications often help us, but can also quietly harm us. As we get older, our kidneys don't work as smoothly, and an overload of chemicals or drugs is the last thing they need. Yet aging usually brings more health issues and more pills. Some medications can be nephrotoxic, meaning they directly or indirectly damage the kidneys. When that happens, the kidneys lose some of their ability to filter waste from the blood, leading to serious health problems. We measure kidney damage in stages, from mild dysfunction to complete failure. The risk of drug-induced kidney injury, also called nephrotoxicity, increases with age and is higher for people who already have kidney disease. There are two main types of nephrotoxicity. Dose-dependent toxicity. The higher the dose, the greater the damage. Idiosyncratic toxicity. Unpredictable, varying from person to person. Nephrotoxicity might be triggered by issues like muscle breakdown, blocked blood flow in the kidneys, or acid buildup. Any of these can reduce kidney function and lead to conditions such as nephrotic syndrome or imbalances in electrolytes. In this video, we'll discuss how certain common medications can affect kidney health and give you tips on using them more safely. By knowing the risks, you can make wiser decisions about your health. Stick with us to learn how to protect your kidneys while still treating other medical problems effectively. Now, let's explore which medications can pose a threat to your kidneys. Number 1. Antibiotics Antibiotics are commonly prescribed, but they are not without risks. Has your doctor ever prescribed antibiotics for your sore throat or skin infection? If so, these drugs may be affecting your kidneys. Antibiotics, also called antibacterials or antimicrobials, combat bacterial infections by destroying bacteria or preventing them from reproducing. Common brand names include Cipro, Augmentin, Flagyl, Bactrim, or Amoxicillin. They treat infections such as strep throat, pneumonia, urinary tract infections, and skin infections. Antibiotics cannot treat viral infections like colds, flu, bronchitis, most coughs, or most sore throats. Inappropriate antibiotic prescriptions can result in side effects like diarrhea and harm to the liver and kidneys. Even when used correctly, certain antibiotics such as polymyxins, aminoglycosides, and vancomycin can damage kidney function. Your kidneys are responsible for clearing antibiotics and other medicines from your body. Antibiotics like polymyxins can damage kidney cell membranes, causing kidney injury. Another group, aminoglycosides, can build up in kidney cells, causing cell death and harming kidney tubules. Though the exact mechanisms remain partially unclear, inflammation and direct cell harm appear to play significant roles. Around one-third of antibiotic prescriptions in the United States are not suitable for the conditions being treated. That is according to a report from the CDC and research in the Journal of the American Medical Association. Before insisting on antibiotics or filling a prescription, it helps to find out if they are truly necessary. Ask your doctor whether you really need them. If antibiotics are essential, follow the dosage precisely and comply with any dietary instructions. Do not save antibiotics for later or share them with others as they are personalized for specific health conditions. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. NSAIDs may not sound familiar, but you likely know ibuprofen, aspirin, Motrin, Ketorolac, Celecoxib, or Naproxen. Over 30 million people use these drugs daily to relieve headaches, sprains, colds, flu, or arthritis pain. They mainly work by blocking the CUX enzyme, which produces substances that cause pain. Unfortunately, CUX is also vital for protecting the kidneys and regulating fluids. When NSAIDs block CUX, the outcome can be kidney damage. All NSAIDs can cause acute kidney injury, especially among older adults, or those who take them in higher doses or over long periods. This harm generally takes two forms. Number one, blood flow changes. Blocking COX narrows kidney blood vessels, 
reducing oxygen and nutrient supply. That can lead to fluid retention, higher blood pressure, and possibly acute tubular necrosis. Number 2. Inflammation Although NSAIDs are anti-inflammatory, prolonged use may inflame the kidney tubules, causing significant issues. Data show that 1% to 5% of daily NSAID users experience kidney problems, which translates to up to 2.5 million people each year. One 2006 study found that NSAID use raises the chance of AKI by 26% in the first month. Another investigation revealed that many patients regain kidney function once they stop NSAIDs. Even so, caution is crucial. If you rely on NSAIDs for daily pain relief, stay hydrated and talk to your doctor about any kidney-related concerns. Diuretics Diuretics help people who retain fluid because of heart or kidney failure or liver cirrhosis. Some are sold over the counter, though prescription diuretics tend to be stronger. Common diuretics include hydrochlorothiazide, bumetanide, furosemide, spironolactone, and acetazolamide. By increasing urine production, they help flush out extra salt and water, which can lower blood pressure, a key contributor to kidney problems. Most of the time, diuretics support kidney health, but in some cases, they can do the opposite. They rarely damage the kidneys directly the way NSAIDs might. Instead, they change how concentrated your urine is or how certain electrolytes are balanced. If taken at high doses or for a long time, these drugs can cause dehydration, which can be harmful to the kidneys. A study from 1999 to 2010 looked at 131 people who developed acute kidney injury, AKI, while on diuretics. Many already had chronic kidney disease or other complications before starting the medication. Overall, the study showed that taking high doses of diuretics raises your chance of AKI. About 27.5% of AKI cases were directly linked to diuretics. If you're thinking of starting diuretics, talk to your doctor first. People with chronic kidney disease who take diuretics need plenty of fluids and regular checks on electrolytes and kidney function. With modern home test kits, it's now simpler than ever to monitor your kidneys and stay informed about your health. Proton pump inhibitors. Proton pump inhibitors are widely used and often available over the counter for conditions like gastroesophageal reflux disease and acid reflux. They work by blocking a proton pump enzyme in the stomach, reducing acid production. Although PPIs are considered safe and effective for acid-related issues, they can also negatively impact your kidneys. They have been linked to acute interstitial nephritis, AIN, an inflammatory problem that damages the small spaces between kidney tubules. While only a small fraction of PPI users develop AIN, it has become a leading cause of drug-induced AIN in developed nations. Unfortunately, it can be silent, showing no signs until kidney function has already dropped. Ongoing PPI use may also lower kidney function over time, sometimes progressing to chronic kidney disease. Another risk is low magnesium, hypomagnesemia, which can lead to seizures, muscle cramps, or irregular heartbeats, all of which may further harm your kidneys. A 2019 cohort study in the journal Pharmacotherapy found that people using PPIs were at higher risk for both acute and chronic kidney disease compared to those who didn't use them. If you rely on PPEs, be sure to check your kidney function and magnesium levels regularly. Although PPIs can help relieve acid reflux in the short term, using them long-term increases risks such as infections, bone fractures, or nutritional deficiencies. ACE inhibitors. Angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors are prescription drugs usually given to control blood pressure and help with heart, blood vessel, or kidney problems. Common examples include lisinopril, ramipril, enalapril, and benazepril. They lower blood pressure by blocking the angiotensin II enzyme, which tightens blood vessels. 
ACE inhibitors often improve blood flow to the kidneys, easing their workload and slowing the development of chronic kidney disease. They can also reduce protein in the urine, which is a common issue in kidney disease. However, taking ACE inhibitors with NSAIDs or diuretics or not drinking enough water can increase the chance of acute kidney injury. These drugs sometimes lower your estimated glomerular filtration rate, not always meaning harm. Often, it just indicates that kidney filters, glomeruli, are relaxing. In some rare situations, especially in advanced heart failure, severe dehydration, or when both renal arteries are blocked, ACE inhibitors may cause acute kidney failure. Usually, stopping or cutting down the medication allows kidney function to recover. Despite these concerns, many medical professionals strongly recommend ACE inhibitors for those with high blood pressure, diabetes, or chronic kidney disease because they protect the kidneys over the long term. Antiviral drugs. Antivirals are usually prescribed to handle severe or chronic viral infections, such as COVID-19, flu, herpes, hepatitis B and C, Ebola, or HIV. They can help control these viruses by reducing symptoms or making them less severe. While antivirals are effective at fighting viruses, some can damage the kidneys. They might directly harm cells or allow crystals to form inside the kidneys, potentially causing kidney stones or blockages. Those concerned about kidney injury from antiviral drugs should work closely with a doctor, make sure they get the correct dose, and be mindful of drug resistance. Antivirals always require a prescription, so avoid buying them online or through unverified sources. Lithium Lithium is a prescription medication used to stabilize mood in conditions like mania or bipolar disorder. Examples include Priadel, Camcolet, Liskinum, and Lye Liquid. Lithium has helped many people for over six decades, but it can seriously affect kidney health if used long term. Extended lithium use may lead to acute or chronic kidney disease and can even cause kidney cysts. Early stage damage can sometimes be reversed, however, if not addressed, it may become permanent. Some key problems include nephrogenic diabetes insipidus in which the kidneys fail to respond properly to antidiuretic hormone, causing thirst and frequent urination. Rarely, lithium can result in end-stage renal disease. It may force the kidneys to expel too much sodium, risking severe complications such as rhabdomyolysis, seizures, coma, and even death. Anyone taking lithium should maintain a balanced diet with enough salt and fluids. Regular blood tests to check kidney function are essential. Lithium can also harm other parts of the body, so informing your doctor about any heart, kidney, thyroid, or breathing issues is critical before starting treatment. If you think your medications are harming your kidney health, consult a professional. You might not notice kidney failure initially, but as it advances, you may see low urine output, swelling in the legs, shortness of breath, or extreme fatigue. Neglected kidney damage can be life-threatening. If you use any of the drugs described here, track your kidney function. Keep an eye on blood creatinine levels, glomerular filtration rate, and urine protein. Proper hydration helps your kidneys flush out sodium, urea, and toxins, reducing harm from nephrotoxic drugs. Maintaining a healthy lifestyle can reduce the need for many medications. A balanced diet, regular exercise, and managing body weight may help protect your kidneys from harm. If you want to understand your kidney health better and learn how the body works, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell for more life-saving information.